Dear friends, good morning on Wednesday the 11th of November. Last week I came across an article by the Christian doctor and ethicist John Wyatt entitled How to Have Hope in the Face of Coronavirus. I thought I'd pass on some of the points that he makes. He begins by observing that much of our society is in danger of being driven by fear. We see this in the faces of people that we walk past on the pavement as they give us a wide berth and put their hands over their masks for double protection in case we might infect them with the virus. This same sense of unease has been fuelled by the government, who has used fear as their greatest weapon to keep us compliant. Don't kill your granny was the most frightening message that Matt Hancock managed to dream up when he was encouraging young people to practice social distancing. And those fears have been fuelled by images of stretchers with body bags, unconscious people on ventilators, and more recently grasped graphs with exponentially increasing curves, uh, indicating potential deaths if we don't take action. Now it's no surprise that there's been a huge spike in anxiety-related problems and mental health issues because of all this. Now I don't want to minimise the seriousness of the pandemic, nor to encourage any sort of flouting of the restrictions that we're currently under. But you would have thought that Christians would be a bit fearful, a bit less fearful than the rest of society. John Wyatt suggests that the evidence shows that we Christians are also struggling with anxiety, fear and depression as the virus continues to spread. Well, what tools do we have to help us counter fear? John Wyatt gives us three suggestions. First, he reminds us that God's people have always faced famines, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, plagues and pandemics for thousands of years. None of what we're going through is new. We like to think that we're in control of our lives and when things are going well, we think we're safe and secure. But the truth is we never were in control, and the pandemic simply reminds us of that fact. There is only one person who is in control, and that is the Lord. And he uses the various tests and trials that we face, not out of malevolence, but as a way of revealing the truth about our hearts, or what we are in ultimately relying on. Peter writes in his first letter, You may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. In other words, you don't know if your faith is real until it is tested in the same way that you don't know whether a relationship is real until one of you goes through a really testing time. Secondly, over and over again in the Bible, God says, don't be afraid, do not fear. Now, this isn't just a word of support and reassurance, it's a command. When we're afraid, we have a choice. Either try to try and cope with that fear on our own, as so many are doing at the moment, or to give it to the Lord. Now, of course, some people are so anxious that they need to seek professional help. But most of us are not the helpless victims of our fears. We can decide where to put our trust. And God says, trust me, don't be afraid. Thirdly, he recommends practising the discipline of Christian hope. One of the first messages of the pandemic was wash your hands, and I guess most of us are doing that several times a day. Well, we need to practise mental hygiene in the same way that we're practising physical hygiene. And one of the best ways to do that is to start with gratitude. If we focus on naming every person and every blessing that we're grateful for, it's very difficult to feel fearful at the same time. When I'm grateful, I am reminding myself of the character of my good God, and that encourages me to trust him to help me face whatever the future may hold. As David says in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God's goodness, forgiveness, love and blessings are with me every moment of every day of my life. I am not the victim of random forces. God is with me, guiding my steps, and that promises continues through this life, through the pandemic, out on the other side and into eternity. We have nothing ultimately to fear. I thought I would end today by praying the general thanksgiving. It's an ancient prayer found in the Book of Common Prayer and it is a wonderful way for us to give thanks. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life. 
but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. God bless you today.